And welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report, where we look at what's coming out of the news and sort of uh, make sense of all of, it, all of it. Right? That makes sense. I think that's what we do. We, we look at the news and we try to make sense of what's going on, what could happen, what might not happen, what shouldn't happen. So we, we, we dive into all of that. And here to discuss this, as always, with me is Mr. Brian Schultz. What's going on, Brian? How much? What's going on, Pablo? It feels like every week our uh, our agenda gets bigger and bigger. <laughs> I, I know, man. I know. And it's like... This is a good thing. This is a good thing. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, but it's... At some point, it's going to be enough is enough. I want to see something, right? Fair so, enough. So that's what gets me like... I got to talk about it because is you know it's something we haven't heard or we have heard and they've getting given us more uh, substance to what they're 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 putting out there. Um, we're gonna keep it the same way we did it last time in terms of the format. We just so we're just gonna start with like Marvel news and Eternals has accidentally leaked into some pr- promotional artwork and. Uh, in that artwork, we get a glimpse of what some of the characters are going to look like. Uh, Brian, b- before we started the show, you had mentioned the way they lined things up. The way they lined them up was interesting. Um, we got a little bit of info to one of the characters, Fastos, who is played by Brian Kai. What was, what's his name? Kyrie Brian Henry. Henry. Yeah. Brian, Brian Henry Kyrie. If, if you haven't seen Atlanta, He's amazing in that. That's why I first saw him, Brian Henry Tyree. When I first saw him there, I was like, yo, this guy's amazing. And he's done a lot of Broadway shows too, or not a lot of arts. He's done some, and I think he's gotten um, rare reviews for that too. So I'm looking forward to understanding his character in this little tidbit that was released today or leaked. Um, then we're also going to talk about some of the things that we're looking forward to in Eternals. I was thinking about it today and, and I was like, damn, well, what what more can we talk about Eternals? And I sort of came up with a list of things that I'm looking forward to. And Brian, I'm sure you have something in mind as well. Um, and then we're going to sort of look into the director and what sort of film do, do we think we're going to get? Um, then we'll talk about Jane Foster and the... New powers, she says that she's going, oh, not the, let's call it different set of powers she's going to have compared to the Thor that we know in Crims and Chris Hemsworth. So that's going to be interesting. Um, then we get into some DC news. Uh, the Joker and Deathstroke are now going to be in Zack. I'm telling you, Zack Snyder has complete, I want this guy, let's do it sort of thing. He has that going for him um then we're going to get into some industry um films uh sorry some industry news with james bond um lashana lynch uh, and this is something we already knew uh give, being given the 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 code name of uh 007 so we're going to discuss that and also charlie hunnam right hunnam hunnam that's his name right yep. He's thrown his name into the hat that he wants to be Bond. We'll give you our sort of take on on that uh, possibility. Uh, Brian, Eternals. We saw another piece or a glimpse into what this may sort of look like. I, I will since day since day one since they released that picture or, or, or that that artwork of how huge some of these characters are going to be, and I'm talking about physically, like this. I think is the 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 Celestials. When I saw that, I went crazy. I'm like, this is gonna be it's gonna be a spectacle. And so we got a little bit of a glimpse as to what they're going to look like, some of their costumes. Um, and Brian, as you mentioned earlier, you were interested in how they 
were lined up. What sort of uh, information did you get from that? Well, it's kind of a question. I think anytime you have an ensemble cast and a team up type of film, I think of studios as wanting to kind of put forth the leads more prominently in any sort of the artwork. If you think about historically like a Star Wars or even the way the Avengers were portrayed on the poster, you could generally tell, okay, like RDJ gets sort of the biggest visual and then you see the storyline ultimately centers around him. There's usually not an accident to that. So the first thing that jumped out to me was Richard Madden, Icarus. He is front and center. He is in front of the rest of the team. So there is clearly an attempt to say this is yeah. the star in this lineup, which I thought was interesting given, you know, very accomplished actor. He is not the highest profile name in that lineup. And so the other thing, the other thing that threw me for a loop was Angelina Jolie is in the third position on the right side, not the second, not the coach. She's in the third position. It implies a much more supporting type of slot for her character, mm -hmm. Athena, than I might have thought just based upon the you know her super a-list status and lending her name to that film so you know again like Selma Hayek was and Gemma Chan were kind of in the secondary positions flanking Icarus and then you had Brian Tyree Henry and Camille Nanjani kind of more toward the back of the lineup even though those two obviously carry a fair amount of name recognition as well so you know loaded cast but I just I just wondered sort of it made me ask the question do we read into that a little bit about the story and, and which characters are featured and how big their roles are in this. I believe, and I've heard that Richard Madden is amazing in this. I don't know if you ever saw The Bodyguard or Bodyguard on Netflix. I was just about to say, if you haven't, if people at home haven't seen that, do yourself a favor. It's a great cop short series, fantastic. That's one of the things I wanted to add to the show and do like a, a quick seg segment on recommendations for people. But he is fantastic. Did he win something for that? Yes. Yeah. Over in, in Britain. It, yeah. Well deserved. Well deserved. And from what I've heard of the rumors that people are. People are saying that he is amazing in this in, in, in Eternals is is I believe it. I think Marvel recognizes it. And they're putting him front and center as someone who is going to certainly impress the audience when his because at the end of the day, man, they're trying to sell toys after this. So if Icarus is dope, cha-ching. Yeah. Right? And Richard Madden can can he has that sort of heroic presence. There were there were there were glimpses of Superman or the thought probably when he when in certain spots when he walked across the screen and he's he the, he reminded me of the crisis on earth too. Like if he was an evil Superman, I'd believe it. Hmm. He had that sort of presence and and I think that's going to give people a little bit of um, nostalgic feel when they see him. And, and wow, he, if he could be Superman sort of vibe to me anyway. But um, I'm looking forward to his, his performance. And, and and yeah, you're right. The way they line them up, they put him front and center. Like if they ran it across the screen real quick and they asked you, what did you see? Uh, Justice League. That was Superman in front. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um. We also got a little bit of a glimpse as to what his costume is going to look like. And it looks pretty accurate to the comic books. Yes. So listen, Marvel doesn't disappoint in my eyes. They Every once in a while, they, they have their little blemishes. But for the most part, man, you can't you can't deny that they're trying to do. They're trying to bring these characters to life. Fastos. I believe there was some sort of a, a product description for a toy that came out for him, correct? Well, remember, the movie was supposed to be out correct. this weekend. Yes. So that's why the toy line, some of the merchandising is still moving ahead because the manufacturers don't want to sit ah. on that. So that's why we're getting this discrepancy wow. of, you know, some of these products overseas are being sold even as the movie is no longer coming out until um, later next year, late next year now. So, mm -hmm. um, 
But I think, you know, my take on it is it wasn't like groundbreaking stuff, but I think it all fed into this idea of this is a path for Marvel to go into a different kind of genre. And I know we'll talk about Chloe Zhao a little bit, but even without hearing her quotes about this film, this has a potential to kind of be like a mythological epic. Like if you think to like 1960s and 50s, there was an era where every Greek and Roman myth was kind of made into a feature film. And it was a big deal back then. These were big budget, big effect. They look cheesy now, but back then it was a big deal. And so this kind of story has that DNA of this is the, we've shown you superhero origin stories. We're now going to show you the origin of superheroes effectively, yeah. which is what this is in, in a really global yes. scale. And so yeah. I think the toy kind of confirmed this idea of this like interplanetary rivalry and battle between celestials, deviants, eternals. And so that make I mean, that's exciting. That to me is like, that's like a whole other dimension uh, mm -hmm. relative to what we've seen from other, other properties here. What's interesting in the description, um, it says over the centuries, Fastos has helped nudge humanity forward technologically while always keeping his brilliance hidden in the shadows. I'm looking forward to seeing how he does that. I'm pretty sure they're going to be some humorous moments, and that's probably going to be one of them. Some of the things that I'm or that we are looking forward to um, for this movie. I have a list here. One of the things we already spoke about, I'm looking forward to seeing Richard Madden's uh, Icarus. Because from what, again, from what I've heard, his performance is uh, quite amazing. And another thing that I'm looking forward to that you just mentioned, this is going to introduce the history of the MCU. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that story is told. Because we we certainly going to get possibly some Easter eggs of Galactus. Mm -hmm. Supposedly, we're going to get some Easter eggs of Atlantis or that we will see Atlantis. And I'm also then now looking forward to the performance. You have a lot of good actors here. Yep. Some of them are new in the sense that we've never seen them before. But they were impressive enough to get a role in this because i as we already know marvel has have, has had a great track record of casting the right people for these characters but this is higher pro this is as high profile across the board on yes. average as i yes. think yes. they've gone for the lead of a film usually it's not this many yes already established names yes so so i'm looking forward to the performance what are some of the things that you're looking forward to oh well, look i mean Chloe Zhao gave an interview about this a couple of months ago and dropped She's the it. director, correct? Yeah. Okay. I mean, look, she <laughs> the first sentence out of her mouth was basically, this is the manga influenced Marvel movie. I'm like, that's it. I'm in. I don't need to hear anything else. I I'll just take my money. Take my money right now. Wow. But just that idea, right? Just that idea that they let her do that. And she said, look, I love that's what I that's my, you know, I love that genre and I was allowed to bring it into this film. I don't totally know what that's gonna look like, but Intense. it can't be bad. <laughs> it's just gonna be new, right? That makes me excited. But then she also talked about some interesting things in terms of she's known for small indie film. She's had a picture win Golden Lion at Venice, People's Choice in Toronto. This is a totally different world, but she said the things she made her name on in small indie films she basically was able to do here just with a lot more money so she's like she talked about shooting a lot at magic hours like twilight basically at dusk real world sets and locations which again to me you're tying that to this kind of story my mind is sort of already blown like how are you going to pull that off yeah um and then she also mentioned something interesting which is wanting the audience to not to walk away from the film not seeing the ethnicity of the cast, but thinking of them, of them as a family. And when you see the lineup of ethnicities in the cast, that seems like a really notable statement. So a lot there without actually telling us <laughs> what's in the movie, but um, it just made me feel like we're getting something different and she was given the keys to really kind of cut loose with it. So I think that's exciting. I So, uh, so and, and yeah, visually, I'm looking forward to seeing how this is going to look because I expect to see some great cinematography and 
I, ever since it was announced, I was like, oh, yes, we're going to get a deeper dive into how a lot of this stuff, especially when it comes down to mutants, how this stuff begins. Mm -hmm. So definitely looking forward to the Eternals. Tell us what you think in the comment section below. Uh, are you looking forward to the Eternals? I'm pretty sure you are if you're listening to this anyway. Jane Foster, Miss Natalie Portman has been on talk shows talking about how different or that her powers are going to be different than Chris Hemsworth Thor. Um, I did a little bit of digging and her powers had to do more with being able to manipulate the hammer. Right. Um, right. Not sure what else. What are your thoughts? I have mixed emotions about this film right now. I think I really, I enjoyed the ride that was Ragnarok, but I've found that I don't go back to that film as much. I know it was loved by critics and generally seen in that circle as sort of solving, cracking the code on Thor. But I'm a little worried that, you know, now the corporate's made a comment about the silliness of this film and like Taika Waititi, has incredible talent. Like you see the season finale of Mandalorian season one, that's Taika Waititi at his best. It's got the light humor, but amazing action and visuals. Yeah, yeah. I just worry if they're really leaning into the Taika of this and it's Thor. I, I, I there's like a little risky beat that too silly is kind of too much for me. Yeah. But then I'm also torn because I just don't feel like Christian Bale does silly and he's the bad guy in this movie. So I just am like, I know you were talking about the power. So bringing it back to the powers, to me, there's a little whiff of, we know Natalie Portman left this series on bad terms. And we know it was going to take something to bring her back. We clearly know Taika Waititi made it a priority to bring her back. This has a little whiff of name your price, name your terms. Yeah. And Natalie Portman may have had some input on what she wanted to see Jane be able to do. And so we get the cancer, we get powers, and then we're getting powers plus, I guess, of some kind. And yeah. that may have just been a condition for her to sign on to, to do this again. So, uh, you know, I'm a, it's not high. Like, I know we're not going to get a bad movie, but like scale of one to 10, ner I'm a little nervous, like two or three, that this is, this is a little too much in the direction of silly. I'm a little nervous, too, about it being too, and we've used this word before, goofy. Every time it's on on TV, I don't really watch it. It was just too goofy. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> you know there was uh there was some they had his moments certainly that that opening sequence with thor that was dope that was dope um some of the action sequences were dope but in terms of the characters themselves like the grandmaster to me you know when you read about him in the comics and what he's capable of all i saw was bill or, or jeff goldblum, jeff goldblum. Yeah. that's all i saw being jeff goldblum exactly yeah exactly i don't want to see that i want to see the grandmaster like Benicio del Toro, as the collector, he was phenomenal, right? He acted like someone not of this earth. And Jeff Goldblum was just Jeff Goldblum. So I was disappointed with that. And for me, Thor Ragnarok was released for the purposes of getting you high and, and happy about the movie and, you know, good feelings to then give you infinity war right um and for me it just there were some moments but it, it, you know and the whole planet whole thing for me you know it just kills it for me so i'm i'm a little bit worried as well again to see if this is going to be goofy or goofier i don't want either tell us your thoughts in the comment section below, what do you guys think of, of this uh, Thor that we're going to get from Taika Waititi and Jane Foster having different a set of powers? How is that going to look? Is it going to be believable? Are we going to believe it? 
Are we going to cheer the way we've cheered countless of times before for certain characters when they make their debut in like impressive form? I don't know. Well, they have to. I mean, the last note for me is they have to recenter Thor himself somehow, right? We've yeah. seen the we've seen the Thor Ragnarok kind of loses his powers, kind of has to regain them, and then unleashes the new level of powers yes, we yes, get, yes. and then and then we see him see his people basically wiped out or marooned, and and then he becomes Fat Thor, which was kind of a joke until he you know to the last fight scene when he sort of you know. So we're kind of, and then he leaves with the Guardians, right? Who figured to be at least in a little bit of this film. In yeah, some yeah. Way. But it kind of feels Thor is a little bit lost, and so we of need course. to figure out like what is what is Marvel going to do to recenter this character, yeah. you know, and sort of actually give us the persona they want? Because I don't think two and a half hours of Fat Thor in space is really going to carry a film, yeah. and, it, and it doesn't make sense of what they've described. So, you know, but then again, you got. An Academy Award winner Natalie Portman, Academy Award winner Kristen Bale on the other side. Like the downside's probably pretty limited. Like they should be able to come up with something good, but I it just so, it man. just worries me a little bit because this thing, like I said, on rewatch, it's just I can't. It, it, yeah, it was. It, it's not. It's Matter not, how it's much not my I favorite. Thought. Yeah, it's definitely. not my favorite. Yeah. Um, and and one last point, and this is something that we had uh, talked about after the show last time is that Thor lost a lot. If you think about what Thor lost, he lost probably the most out of them, in my opinion. You know, he lost his, his home. He lost his mother, his father, his brother. He witnessed that, his best friend, his people. You know, he lost a lot. Not even the satisfaction of killing him, of, of killing Thanos when he, when he finally had the opportunity felt uh, reinvigorating or... Or give it gave him some sense of, of 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 how would I say of calmness I guess or of or, or revenge pretty much you know he wasn't made whole so he lost a lot and to see him get back to form is going to be interesting to see DC news we always like to talk about DC news man because it's just uh, uh. and there was stuff here that I left out we might even go over it who knows. Joker and Deathstroke are now. Is this confirmed? Yeah, they're shooting the. They're shooting in the additional scenes. Okay, Joker and Deathstroke are in Zack Snyder's Justice League. I, I won't be surprised if I see anybody else in there that I haven't seen in DC Comics. It's like. <laughs> it seems almost to me as Zack Snyder will not and you know and, and based on the, the 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 popularity of this who knows but it seems to me as the, as if this is his last shot to do these characters and he's doing everything that he possibly can to do what he wants because after this there's no more what do you think about this inclusion into an already jam-packed Zack Snyder's Justice League. All right, so I got, I got, I have, I, I actually don't. Sadly, I do not agree with you on this. I know you, I, I know you know what I think on this. But so first off, let me just talk about the actual news, and then I'm my conspiracy theory. So to me, this is the danger of something like this because if I think about a director's cut, which is effectively as a director's cut, a great director's cut. Which I and I would say, folks at home, if you've not seen Kingdom of Heaven, the director's cut, do yourself a favor and rent it, or watch the original first to see how average and inconsistent it is, and then watch the director's cut. To understand I watched how it. Awesome, that movie is. When I, you add in the out. I watched it. I haven't watched the director's cut yet. Okay, but I so, I watched the first one and I, and I I I couldn't get into it. I don't know why. So, but, but the point I want to make is when you watch the Kingdom of Heaven director's cut, the entirety of the hour that Ridley Scott adds is going deeper into the characters that you see in the original cut. So it gives you this context, this flavor, this stakes to these existing characters. The danger to me when I see stuff like Joker and Deathstroke being included is you're going wider, you're going thinner with a story that was already too thin because you didn't really establish Steppenwolf as a credible villain, let alone get to Darkseid as your sort of super bad behind that. So how are you gonna accomplish that if you have 
quite honestly, I don't want to call the Joker a lesser villain, but from a power standpoint, he is in this case. Lesser villains like the Joker and Deathstroke running around and populating scenes in any meaningful way. So yeah. to me, the twofold danger is, A, they actually get real time in this story, which is just going to clutter whatever we're supposed to draw from the story, the main storyline. And the second is, I think this is because it's the opposite of what you said. I think Zack Snyder's doing this because he is trying to leave himself threads that he can do more in this universe if this draws the subscribers that he knows it's probably going to. The, the, the possibility of that being the case is high. I do agree. Because how does this fail from a subscriber standpoint? This is like a mortal, of all the stuff we're talking about, this is the biggest mortal lock to add subscribers to a platform because of the way this has come about. If you listen to our podcast in the past, and you'll hear me say that, I am I think I'll, I'll probably do a show. If you listen to our podcast, <laughs> <laughs> we've been saying this was the only choice Warner Brothers had in terms of releasing, that's, in terms of releasing the Zack Snyder Cup because of the the people who wanted this movie and the chant of release the Snyder Cut kept getting stronger over the years. And at some point, some smart guy at Warner Brothers said, listen, see those thousands of people? Those are thousands of possible subscribers. Do we put it in a movie so they can dump us the next the next week or whatever? No. We do series. Keep them there for they're not gonna they're not gonna cancel. You know, and then by that time the hope is that we have enough content to keep them. This is this was easy. But to me, I just don't know. Are we gonna get flashbacks of the Joker of what possibly may have occurred with Batman and Robin? Possibly. Is that going to make this Joker more enjoyable than the previous outing in Suicide Squad? For me, not possibly. Deathstroke, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with Death Deathstroke because they didn't do jack with him last time. He just stood there looking at Lex. That is not impressive. <laughs> you know he looked good but not enough for me to want more since we're getting them i'm want i want to see how involved he is that's how that's what i'll say about this news this all goes to i i think we're headed for a place where we get to the end of these four parts and it's not a true ending it ends with some kind of you know, stinger after credit something or some kind of teaser for the next. And then sure enough, you wait a couple months and Warner Brothers is like, sees the numbers and they're like, Suicide Squad director's cut, green light. Zack Snyder part two, green light. I just, it just has all the earmarks of that happening to me, to me at least. But. So you think it'll only be, let's say they get a bunch of subscribers, but yet the critics hate it and there's this whole back and forth about how good it was. Do you think they risk continuing doing something that most people or are split between people who did or didn't like it? Is it, in, is it enough for them to take that risk if people aren't going overwhelmingly? Like when I saw Watchmen on HBO, that was amazing to me. The biggest right. argument against my theory is, uh, is can you get Gal Gadot, Jason Momoa, Ben Affleck, Henry, can you get them to keep doing this? I, that's the one question I don't know, because they're obviously going to demand a fair amount of money. This is a, hey, we're going to help Zach out, do him a solid, you know, he went through a personal tragedy. We're going to bring his vision to the screen. It's a team effort. It's a family. I get it. Yeah. After that, I think it becomes more about the economics. And I don't know if they'll be willing to do more of these because they're going to be long shoots and you'll be starting from scratch with a part yeah. two. But if the numbers are there, like the analogy I draw is a totally different genre, but like, you know, Adam Sandler has been money for Netflix. It doesn't matter what the critics say. Every movie he puts out, murder mystery, th these things do huge viewership for Netflix. Yeah. So they keep making more. Hubie yeah. Halloween just came out. Like, I just think that if this thing nails the subscriber numbers, there's going to be immense pressure from the, yeah. the higher ups to say, why aren't we more in the Zack Snyder business on the small screen? 
Maybe it didn't sell as well as we thought on the big screen, but maybe it, it will sell here on the small screen. So let's lean into that. I That's my concern, I guess, based upon what we've seen. And I just think adding these characters into me has all, all the hallmarks of like a just in case, just in case we need to build this universe out. These guys are around now. Um, yeah, there is a possibility for that. This can be an amazing. The word redemption keeps coming up. And for Zack Snyder, if he's able to pull off something amazing. Then good for him. Good for him. Because of how, the way things went down wasn't fair. Warner Brothers didn't do right by him. You know, that's what I I think I, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing his his vision because this is something that he fought for. This is something that, you know, at first people were blaming him for, for Justice League. And it wasn't his fault. I honestly don't believe Josh Whedon's, it was Josh Whedon's fault too. This was something that Warner Brothers did. Josh Whedon was just somebody that they hired to get it done. And he probably didn't care for it, but whatever. There's a whole nother situation going over there. Yeah, with that. it was like the merger they were going through, the timelines yeah, they yeah. were up against for yeah. bonuses. There's all all sorts of subplots. To this have nothing to yeah. do with this product. So, so, yeah. You know, and finally we're gonna get it. So I'm hoping to see something better than what we originally saw. Who, who knows? This could be something, a, a great story, man. This could be a great story. And, and if it is, good for him. But if it isn't, we just need to move on and, and, and move on to something new, something better, something that we expect. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some industry news. So, but this news is not something surprising. We already sort of knew this was happening. And I'm talking to, about uh, Lashana Lynch confirming that she is going to be a 007. She's going to be given the title of 007. This is something that um, we heard previously, and they just now confirmed it. But I'm interested in seeing if they are able to expand this universe and she is a possible or not the possible but possibly um the vehicle that they're used to expand this universe of james bond because i'm you know is is always been a james bond and the bond girls and stuff, but nothing else after that so they're they're looking towards expanding and Let's see how this plays out. This can go horribly wrong. But what do you think? So first off, Lashana Lynch, great job as Monica Rambeau in Captain Marvel. So that's what you call a segue, folks, because we went from <laughs> comic book news to someone who's in the Bond universe. No, I think ever since she was casted, ever since she was cast, I think there were a lot of rumors that she was going to be an agent in the field, that she was going to be a double O. And I think the one thing that we got confirmation of was she actually has the double O seven. So she wasn't going to be double O three or, or another number. And so it's, you know, Daniel Craig apparently trying to be retired at the start of this film. To me, this definitely feels a little bit like a hedge, right? There's a little bit of, we're gonna, we're, we're high on this character. There's a big role in this film for her to play. If the audience really gravitates around the performance, there's an avenue here for this character to do other things. Uh, I hate to make this analogy, but remember in um, when Die Another Day came out, there was talk of Halle Berry you know, Jinx Jordan being spun off after that, as that film was kind of coming out and, you know, kind of thank God that didn't happen, but oh, thank you. you know, it was the same idea, right? You're putting this sort of femme fatale agent level character opposite James Bond and then kind of seeing how it plays with the audience. Um, and so I'm not as convinced that this is the next 007 for all of the future mainline Bond films. Yeah. But it may be, as you said, an expanded universe character that either gets its own kind of show to anchor or is in more of a team up. Like maybe maybe we've been thinking all along there's going to be one James Bond. Like maybe there's room for a partnership going yeah. forward, something of that nature. So as I said, it feels a little bit like a hedge. We're going to, we're, we like this character. We like the actress. Let's see how it plays. And if it really hits, 
then we've got some possibilities. Here. Yes, yes, I, I agree. Um, Charlie Hunnam, who made his name at made his name in the 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 TV show uh, Sons of Anarchy. I I didn't watch a lot of it, but I knew people that were high on it. They loved the show, and I've seen some. Even my wife, she 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 loved the show, but I never got into it. He sort of, when I think about him and his career, it sort of reminds me of the conversation that we had regarding Oscar Isaac, although at a much lower level <laughs> um, with regards to Charlie Hunnam. He hasn't quite gotten that role to be a superstar. They've tried with King Arthur. Was it, or oh, yeah, the guy Richie King Arthur. That did yeah. not work. That and didn't work. Pacific I, I Rim, like, oh, yeah. Pacific Rim, it just, it just, it just didn't, didn't, didn't work. It was okay, but it wasn't like I can't wait to see it again. Yeah. All it gave me was the 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 glimpse of what if this was Voltron? That that'll be the day. <laughs> that'll be the day. I want to see Voltron. I do want to see that. <laughs> That's been talked about for a while. So. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I. I there was a quick video that i saw of Char uh, someone drawing charlie hunnam as green arrow if they decided to go that route i'd like that to I see can, that that I can. i'd like to see that because it just hasn't worked out with with these other things and james bond i don't think wouldn't suit him i think i think someone else sh should be sh should be chosen and not him. Um, we already got one Daniel Craig, blonde guy. We don't need, you know, I don't think yeah, it'll they, work. They couldn't be more different personality wise. To me, that my, my, my pushback on Charlie Hunnam as James Bond is not suave enough. He's yeah. a rough, gruff, tough yes, character. That's exactly, what he's best exactly. at. And like, you, I understand you got to modernize Bond, but you can't take the suave. Yeah, he's yeah, got to yeah. be smooth, man. Whatever he is, he's got. And Daniel Craig, you know, what, he told that line of he's volatile. But like when he puts the tux on, yeah, he's smooth. Like yeah, he's still, yeah, he still looks like a really classy guy. And like so, yeah, I just exactly. I don't totally buy Charlie Hunnam in that kind of kind of role. I you agree. know, like and if you're talking about, we've talked about Idris Elba. We've talked about you know Tom Hardy. Uh, Tom Hardy, not so much like we've seen him more recently. But like if you remember, like Tom Hardy in Inception, like he's a much cleaner cut character back then. Or or certainly Henry Cavill's thrown his. These are guys where you're like, yeah, you you clean them up, throw them in a tux, and like yeah. you believe that they're the kind of most masculine guy, smoothest guy in the room, and like I just don't know if Charlie Hunnam pulls that off. Yeah, I agree. I, and and if you said it in the past, Henry Cavill was amazing in Man from Uncle. Yeah. Forget about the movie. He was amazing in that in that role. Amazing. Yeah, he is an American Bond in that movie, yeah. effectively. Yeah. yeah. So. so um. Yeah, man, that's what's been going on in the news lately. Uh, not much, but yet still a lot to discuss. Um, I'm looking forward to Eternals. I'm looking forward to seeing Thor: Love and Thunder and what this could be. I'm looking forward to seeing Kristen Bale in in this role. Is it gonna be? I hope it's not goofy, because if it's goofy, you know, one time watch for me and maybe if I like certain parts, I'll watch it. But if it's goofy, I'm not, you know, it's I don't understand. I mean, it was it was critically acclaimed and people loved it. But yet, I guess we're in the minority that we agree that it was, you know, silly the first time somewhat. Too silly. And yet people people loved it. I guess, you know, I guess people were playing. I mean, Marvel or Disney was playing on these emotions of, you know, pe having people have fun. Well, I think they figured out Hemsworth, the, com the comedian, yeah, yeah. is really talented. Like if you watch like the Ghostbusters remake with uh, Kristen Wiig, not a great movie, but he's very funny. And like, yeah. Men in Black International, terrible movie. He's actually kind of funny and charismatic in it. Like he's good at comedy. Like I think once they found that out, they kind of just moved it a little bit in that direction. Yeah, so. let's see what happens. I hope we get Thor's redemption. I hope he gets back to form. Yep. Looking forward to seeing that. Uh, Joker and Deathstroke. I'm looking forward to seeing Deathstroke, but I don't. 
you know, again, Zack Snyder, perhaps, as you said, he's trying to end this with the possibility of continuing. Just make me believe in Steppenwolf and show me more dark side. I'd be much happier with that. Give me 20, 30, 40 more minutes of those two characters on screen. I don't need to see Jared Leto Joker and, and de this Deathstroke. If, if at the end of that scene, when Stephen Wolf goes back up to, um, in that portal, if they had shown Dark Side and you just see the red eyes, would it have given you a little bit of hope and excitement for, for, for Justice League? Yes and no. You know, I think yes, in the sense of we waited so long for this character to be on screen. So you'd feel like the excitement of, hey, this is really going to happen. Yeah. I think that the, you know, it doesn't compare to Thanos turning around at the end of the first Avengers just because it, you know, if it's, if it's attached to a movie that was kind of uneven and choppy, it just makes mm -hmm. you nervous that like, it's not going to be played out. And as we saw with the Thanos turning around, we were still six years away from mm -hmm. actually seeing him on screen in any meaningful form. So I left with my mouth dropped when I saw that it was Thanos. Well, I let you know they were swinging big. Oh yeah, like they were going for it like in 2012. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> that was that was that that I remember that that day when when he turned around and I was like the first thought that came into my head was I can't believe they're doing this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, you know, with James Bond, listen, everybody's looking for that franchise, man. Everybody's looking for ex a, a universe. Uh, where other characters exist, other interesting characters exist. Who, 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 let's say, for example, I would be interested in a show where, um, what's the guy's name that gives him all the gadgets? Oh, Q. Q. I would be interested in seeing a series on Q. See how that guy's <laughs> think, you know, and the stuff that he has to create to supply the people that, that have to go out in the field. That would be dope to me. Um, yeah, I, I think you and I agree that Charlie Hunnam, you know, there are other roles for him. This isn't it. I think if he tries to get or uh, get them to do a Green Arrow film and get some um, good, talented creators and writers and, and directors or whatever to get them to do Green Arrow, that's something I want to see. Um, so thank you once again for joining us on the North Jam Report. Um, as you can see, we're making changes on the channel. I hope let us know in the comment section below if you like it. You know, and tell us what you don't like. Tell us what if you agree with a lot of stuff that we're saying or, we, or you disagree. Um, we're looking. I'm always looking forward to listening uh, or to, to read your comments and 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 and, and respond. Uh, thank you once again. Have a good night, Brian. Any last words? No, I think the uh, nice to get news on something we hadn't gotten news on in a while in the Eternals, and then I'll just drop in for folks the. Uh, Disney Plus November trailer did not have any WandaVision footage, so it seems like we're getting that closer to the Christmas holidays. But with uh, Mandalorian back and already dropping bombs in, in season one, I think we're uh, we're probably in good hands. But we're finally getting some new content. That's what I thought when I was watching the premiere of that. I was like, ah, something new sort of in, in our realm that we're getting to see. So hopefully we're getting closer to that with WandaVision as well. We know that's coming before the end of the year. Yeah, dope, dope, dope. Um, again, thank you for listening, for watching. Be safe, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report.